things that actually got me interested in Isha Yoga was a study of Zen Buddhism. And a lot of the things they say are very similar to what's being taught here. But would you say it's an inferior method of meditating to follow the breath, which is what they primarily use, and they sit for extended periods of time? See, now first of all you said uh, whatever they do in Zen Buddhism, that's what we're doing here. First I want you to get this. As it is, Buddhist way of life is just about twenty-four hundred years old. Zen is just about probably somewhere between eight to twelve hundred years old. The word Zen, Dhyan. You know what's Dhyan? Dhyan means generally. See, the English word meditation doesn't mean anything, this must be understood. You can close your eyes and sit and that's called meditation. You can close your eyes and sit and do many things. You can do japa, tapa, dharana, dhyana, samadhi, pratyahara, any number of possibilities are there. Or you might have just mastered the art of sleeping in vertical postures. So, the word dhyan indicates a particular dimension. Dhyan was taken on to outside the country, to China, where it became Chan. Chan, somewhere down, when it flowed down to far eastern countries, it became Zen. So, what became Zen is just a mispronunciation of the word Dhyan or a language transmutation that happened as it traveled from culture to culture. So they're talking about dhyan. Dhyan is of various aspects. I cannot go into all the details now. Now they're teaching you watching of the breath, which is… which Buddha called as Satipattana, but for ages yoga called as Anapana Sati Yoga. So these are not new to Buddhism. These have been always there. One of the simplest ways to become meditative is to watch the breath. It's very simple. If you're just watching the process of breath as probably, I don't know what type you've been exposed to, but generally they're teaching you to watch the sensations that are created by the breath. You don't see the breath. You only see the sensations that are caused by the moment of the breath. That is the most rudimentary way of doing it. There are other ways of doing the breath which are completely different. In yoga, breath is known as the kurmanadi. If you follow the breath, not by watching sensations, there are other ways to follow the breath itself, not the sensation. If you follow the breath, it will take you to that point where you are tied to the body. See, if I take away your breath now, your body will fall away from you, isn't it? Isn't it so? Right now it's your breath which is tying you to the body. So, not by watching the sensations, if you follow the very breath, right now you have no way of knowing the breath, you only know the sensations caused by the breath. Is it so? You understand what I'm saying? So, if you follow the very breath, if you follow the Purmanadi, it will take you to that point where you're in touch with your body. Now you can make that point into your conscious process. That is, you're holding… Now, if I hold this, I hold this consciously. Like this, you can hold your body consciously. If you want, you can drop it any moment to get that freedom. So whatever is being taught as Zen is just… Uh, I'm not saying it's inferior, it's a beautiful way. It's a very beautiful way, there's no question about that, if it's properly being transmitted. I don't know what kind of Zen you're doing in Chicago, but if you receive Zen properly, it's a wonderful way. And it's not just about meditation, it's about changing your whole life. The very way you move, the very way you keep the body, the very way you do things, everything has to be integrated. Just watching the breath won't do it. Just watching the breath won't do it. The Zen monasteries, you need to understand, Zen was fundamentally for the monks. It's a twenty-four hour practice. 
It's a twenty-four hour practice. Every aspect, the way you cook, the way you cut the vegetable, the way you keep your garden, the way you keep the place, everything is part of the system. Only then Zen is truly an effective system. You just do Zen for half an hour or one hour, it doesn't mean much. It may have its benefits, but it doesn't mean much as a spiritual process. You must transform your whole life only then it has an overall impact on the system. For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org.